Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I've begun by upgrading RP0 to 0.25 and also upgrading real shoots to the latest version. So, uh, and also I upgraded uh, daily re-entry so I'm going to tick off the alternate heat model. I'm also going to tick off a uh, warning when it's unsafe to deploy parachutes. Not that that's probably gonna come into play this time I don't I think we're gonna try for some sort of lunar mission so uh, I don't know damp heat shield temp to max temp uh, I'll just leave that be okay so uh, I'm gonna let the contracts decide what to do but I'm, I really want to head for the moon because last time we went to the moon we used these uh, really unlikely boosters and so I want to try it without those so we could perform temperature scans around the moon, but these are very specific, and I'll have to take a look at the orbits to decide whether those are doable. If they're really inclined, it might be difficult. Um, might be. I mean, it might not be, depending on how our approach is. Uh, polar orbit, uh, science data from space around Kerbin. Maybe we should pick that up just because it's, well, it might be actually a little bit hard to do at this point. Uh, we've sort of uh, run out of experiments, though I guess we could do one that we've already done before. I don't know if that's that works. Um, science data from space around the moon. Well, that sounds more like what I'm aiming for. I might as well pick that up anyway. I'm not going for atmosphere. Wow, another polar orbit around Kerbin? Well, like I said, there's high demand for that. Position, position satellite in a specific orbit of the moon. Well, that's challenging. Pretty high apoapsis and periapsis. That could be pretty useful. We need some sort of communication with the moon. So that would be useful. Inclination, 178.4 degrees. So we'll, we'll have to make sure that we're approaching retrograde. That can be done. Um, longitude of ascending node. I don't know how hard it is to adjust that. But with such a, with an inclination that's so close to flat, I don't think it should be too hard to push that around. Yeah, um, though I've never aimed for a particular longitude of ascending node before. I mean, I know what it means, I'm just saying that I haven't bothered to ever change my longitude of ascending node. Uh, argument of periapsis is undefined, well, there's that at least. Uh, it requires an antenna and power, well, obviously, and uh, again, we're going to be, I guess, if we do this, we're going to make a communication satellite to help us with further moon missions. Reach designated orbit. Have a mystery goo unit on the satellite. Huh. Huh. That that makes it a lot heavier. Uh, the mystery goo units are 0.15 tons. Yeah, that makes it a lot heavier. And it maintains stability. But a lot of signs from it, and they're giving us quite an advance. I mean, with my current uh, launch costs, I could launch like 10, more than 10, what, 12? something like that rockets with that much okay well that's a lot of buffer alright so uh, I guess the thing to do this time is to try and uh, position a satellite in that orbit around the moon and do scientific data from space around the moon okay well let's and well explore the moon we have to actually land on the moon so we're not there yet but these other two I think we could possibly do alright to the VAB Okay, I've cut out the building process because it took a while. Um, but uh, here we have the probe that I've come up with. Now this is interesting because I had to decide whether to use this inline one or these radio ones. The thing about the inline one is I'm not too sure that contract will recognize it as a good container. Not, not entirely sure whether the contract is specifically looking at the part name or whether it's looking at the, some other variable that indicates that it is a goo container. So um, I, I just played it safe and went with the radio ones, especially since uh, the 0.15 for the inline one is the same as they've reduced the mass of the radio ones so that's the same. So it's still 0.15 for two of them. Uh, so that's handy. So I decided to go with the radio ones. Makes more sense. Otherwise, uh, MMH and uh, nitrogen tetroxide throughout the the whole body here and so and we're using the one kilonewton thruster at the bottom of this can we increase the tech level no 
Okay, so that's got 18 minutes and 44 seconds worth of fuel. And that's not the sole moon stage. We've got this sort of kicker stage. And that's important because if you take a look at the thrust to weight ratio of this, this top stage, it would take it a very, very long time to make the lunar transfer if it was any heavier. So if, if we needed it to make the transfer and get into orbit around the moon with a one kilonewton thruster, uh, it would not be able to do those very quickly. We could make multiple passes around our periapsis, sort of boost multiple times, and we might do that still, but that's not a great way to go. The best uh, idea is to use this sort of kicker stage which will get us the first 1,488 meters per second. And then uh, lunar transfers usually take about uh, 3,100, 3,200. So uh, after that, we'll use about 1,700 of this upper stage. And then we'll need another 900 to get into orbit around the moon. And then a further 500 to adjust our orbit around the moon to fit the contract. So that's the plan. Now... We've got the rest of the launcher. Oh, uh, by the way, I named it Two Flower, and that is uh, in honor of Terry Pratchett. Uh, Two Flower in the Discworld series is the first uh, tourist, the first Discworld tourist, and so we're sort of having a touristy probe here, um, and that's the idea. But uh, yeah, Terry Pratchett passed away, uh, thereby meeting one of his most famous characters, of course, Death. Uh, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, in honor of Terry Pratchett, uh, Two Flower, and maybe I'll go with other Terry Pratchett characters as we go along, though uh, the Rinsewind probe would have to be something very, very depressing. Anyway, um, yeah, you'd have to have read the books to understand any of that, but okay, uh, the launcher name is Baga One, and Baga is the Hindu god of wealth, so I have, uh, well, I've put gold foil all over a rocket, basically, so... Yeah, that's how that worked out, and let's go through the stages. So, uh, one kilonewton thruster here, we've got an Aero B 150 there, and so that's the top of this. Then we have the RD, in this case RD0109, I bit the extra cost in order to get the extra thrust, which you can see we need this stage, the thrust weight ratio is uh, a little bit less than 0.6. Uh, I'm, you can tell I haven't uh, optimized these stages because I'm using round numbers for the burn times. You can always tell when I've actually run the numbers because I've, uh, I end up with very interesting numbers for the burn times in that case. But right now I'm just using round numbers instead of uh, optimized numbers. Oop, okay. So that's the RD0109. And then we have two vanguards here. And of course I have, wow, wait a minute. Why are there two thrust limiters and two? Oh, right, because of the little verniers. Okay, right, 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 no problem. Uh, all right, so we have two vanguards and we also have little RCS thrusters to make sure we can settle the fuel down. So those thruster blocks are there and we've got a uh, resident MMH N204 there. So that's all settled. Now, at the bottom, we've got uh, two of the LR-89s, and I, I know uh, some of you who know your rockets are thinking, well, you should have unlocked the LR-105, and because that's a sustainer that's very good on the vacuum ISP, and there you would have an atlas, right? Uh, you could put the, put the lr 105 in the center, you could skip the vanguards, uh, so you'd have that as your effective second stage and these as a booster stage, and that would be an Atlas rocket uh, in principle. But I'm not remaking the Atlas rocket, so I'm going to try this out without unlocking that just yet. Purchase cost, I mean, with our advance, uh, the entry cost isn't too bad, but still, let's see what we can do without it for now. Okay. So yeah, let's let's see how this goes. So the we have to get to orbit on these three stages. It's pretty close. It's pretty tight uh, because the Arab, uh, not the Arab, um, yeah, the Arab, the Arab uh, only lights once. So we can't relight it. That's the problem. If uh, if we could, then I would just uh, have it complete orbit and then move on to doing the 
start of the lunar transfer. But we can't relight it, so that's why I'm not doing that. Okay, which which is why the third stage has this low thrust weight ratio. Okay, the third stage is the most efficient engine on board. I think that's about it. Yep. So we gotta try this out. We've got plenty of buffer. This costs costs a bit more than I thought it would. So we're close to eight thousand now, but our advance still fulfills many many launches of this. Definitely. Let me make sure I've got the antennae action grouped. Yeah, okay, so the antennae on here action grouped. This is uh, starting deployed, so that means we've got communication there. And I think last time I checked, uh, that was good enough to get to the moon. So, yeah, um, and not like, well, oh, um, maybe we should throw a thermometer on there and the barometer. Nah, that, let's try this out first and then we'll make that a different mission. Okay. Alright, let's go. Okay, here we are. But let's wait till the appropriate timing for the moon. Wait. We have something around the moon still? Forgot about that. The Chandra 2 is still in orbit. So we, we do have some communication support as it is. That, that'll, that'll be helpful. Okay, bit of a shake. Kerbal Joint Reinforcement does its thing. Unfortunately, it's a nighttime launch. Could have put lights on, but uh, but right now, I just want to head for it. Everything seems to be in order. Okay, throttle up. SAS on. Apparently we're we're already running the clock, so let's get going. Here we go. So sorry about the time of the launch, but uh, we're just gonna have to go here. Didn't want to do an off-plane transfer. Best to just match inclinations as best we can. Well, at least with real plumes, we get a nice effect there in the nighttime. We have passed Mach 1, and trajectory is nominal. Okay, as the first engine goes out, I'm gonna have to check the fuel flow on the vanguards. I don't want the fairings separating at the same time. That's not right. Okay, region of intense heating. Okay, looks like we're passing through. Go to 35. Okay, out, set, out, set. And check fuel flow. Fuel flow is, come on, very unstable. Okay, RCS settle. Come on. Oh, come on. Okay, this isn't helping. I'm gonna need to add solids to the side of this in order to boost its boost it to fuel stability. Okay, very stable. Wow. Okay. Well, it took a while, but it did it. That's crazy. 
I don't know why it took so long. I don't know why it eventually did it. <laughs> Alright, here we go. We better angle up a little bit more. Let me turn off RCS. We really don't need it. The Vanguards do have both Gimbling and their their uh, Verniers. I think we're still go for orbit on the third stage, but it's tight. It's mainly a matter of time to apoapsis. The third stage needs a lot more time than we're giving it. Okay, set and ignite. Alright, third stage. We... We're tight for orbit. It is very tight. Oh, we're going down and we're going down fast. Just assuming we don't hit 130 kilometers before this stage runs out. Never want to see a rocket having to do this. All right. Well, we're going down. Oh heck. Let's let's just boost out from here. Uh-oh. No connection. Ah, oh, crud. This is why I get for not uh, trying to launch those four satellites again. Okay. Though, of course, uh, we should have finished our orbital burn by now. If all had gone well, we should have been just fine. But all did not go well, and so we're going to lose this probe in the dark. So yeah, okay, I'll unlock the LR-105. I'm convinced. No more Vanguard, no more X-405. One layer after another after another getting destroyed by the heating. Oh, I think uh, we actually managed to ablate our way through thanks to all the layers that we allowed explode. It actually... I mean, obviously the probe's antennae did not survive. It itself survived. Uh, survived is... Uh, bad way of putting it since it's going to be destroyed by the ocean momentarily or land whatever we're over so that's an alternate way to have uh, re-entry heating protection anyway vessel is destroyed back to the VAB all right so I give up I'll take the LR 105 we we got quite the huge advance so we should be able to whether this purchase and the cost of the actual engine isn't too bad. Less than the boosters, of course it has less thrust. It does have the good vacuum energy. Now, the trick is that it's probably not a good idea to just dump it on the second stage. I mean, I guess it, it would be fine to do so. Let's see. But it's probably best to start it lit as Atlas did. Um, I think the but the problem is we can't create the Atlas-like configuration. The Atlas had all three engines, uh, this LR-105 as well as the two LR-89s uh, lit at the same time at the bottom. And then it uh, actually dumped off the two LR-89s. All of it was fed from the same tank. So that's an interesting configuration, but we can't match that using when we don't have fuel lines and we don't have fuel lines so we can't do that as far as I know and I don't there's no sort of adapter that will allow fuel flow to the side boosters if I put that engine down here and have those well actually but then we won't be able to stage it I could put it on the thrust plate multi adapter there's a center node here and we could just spread these out further and put that engine down here but we won't have any way of staging these two. We could add 
but that gets complicated. I mean, you need a uh, few lines to make that happen. So it's sort of interesting. I think I'm gonna have to do some tweaking. So uh, I'll come back to you once I've figured out exactly how I want this. All right. Well, the long and short of it is that I basically succumbed to the basic design of the Atlas, which is probably the best way to go about using these engines. The obviously, like I said, we couldn't feed them all from the same tank the way Atlas does. So I had to use side boosters, which is basically equivalent and probably preferable. Of course, uh, with the original Atlas design, uh, they didn't do that because they probably didn't have uh, the ability to radially decoupling, uh, decouple things. At least I don't recall any. I mean, uh, of course, Russians did, but I don't recall early American rockets doing that much. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is the configuration. We've got uh, LRE 9s outside, the LR 105 inside, all lighting at the same time. Uh, I could hold off on the LR-105, I guess, but uh, while we're this close to being an Atlas, I decide I might as well go with that as well. It is more efficient not to light it initially. Its uh, sea level ISP is 115, uh, 215, whereas the boosters have 248. The I retained the upper stage with the RD-0109. However, I uh, decided to shorten it to four minutes. And uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, a, a little tweaking, but otherwise more or less the same idea up top. Uh, we do have little separatrons, uh, just in case separation does not go as planned. I hope Ferrum Aerospace does not have too much trouble with the way I've mounted these separatrons. Just ignore that, please, Ferrum Aerospace. And yeah, otherwise we've got uh, enough Delta V4 orbit, clearly. And uh, mission is basically the same idea. The name of the rocket, Telamon. Uh, so I've deviated from my uh, Hindu gods and goddesses because this was so close to uh, Atlas. I decided to use um, a appellation, another a name attached to Atlas. Uh, Telamon means enduring, and of course it's because the Titan Atlas was uh, condemned by Zeus to hold up the sky, and uh, he got the additional name Telamon, so I'm using that additional name, enduring, uh, for this rocket. Alright, I think that just about covers it, so let's try this out. Well, it didn't take very long. Uh oh why are the separatrons sort of making the firing animation? What's up with this? Hmm. Well, I need them. I don't have anything else to use except for them. I'll have to... They're, they're clearly not... They don't, they're not making the sound. They're just making the animation. I've seen that before. So, I think for now we're just going to treat them as lights. Because... <laughs> Uh, we, we need them and uh, I'm not gonna go and try and fix this right now. So, yep, SAS on. Let's uh, see how far away from the moon we are. I'm, uh, I don't want to waste any more time. Getting to the end of my... Okay, 1.7 degrees, I think we can launch with that. It's not optimal, but, uh, yeah, the other launch did not take a very long time to fail. So, let's go. All right. So if anyone has any ideas about those separatrons, please tell me. This is not the first time I've seen that sort of thing happen. Let me uh, activate this and see if we've got the boosters. Yeah, yeah, I need to do a roll. It's going to line me up the wrong way around for separation. Okay. Okay. 
So, if this works out, uh, barring the Separatrons firing like this, uh, in general, if this works out, then this is probably the kind of rocket, maybe the exact rocket, that will launch our first Kerbal into space. So, we are there now. This is that level of a rocket. Now, of course, it was the first rocket to launch an American into orbit using these engines. Not the second stage, though, not the RD-0109. That's a Russian engine. One good thing about the configuration of this rocket with the additional stage, the RD-0109 stage, is that the thrust weight ratio does not exceed 4. So it's a relatively gentle ride up. We, we're getting some weird stage time numbers here. I'm a little bit worried about that. Seems to be flipping between the the LR-105 number and the booster number. Don't know why. I am going 92 on the heading in order to correct the inclination. Okay, should be getting ready for booster separation at any time now, but I can't see it because it's got the stage time for the center stack instead of the boosters. Oh, 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 oh. That's set. Alright. I think we separated in good time, actually. Yep, yep, uh, that, that was a good time to get rid of them. Okay, maybe a little bit dodgy for for Kerbal rating, but we proceed. Just about the right amount of thrust to continue here. I think we're okay for fairing set. Okay, we now have positive vertical acceleration again. Still got 2,000 meters per second left to burn in this stage. Still go for orbit. A minute and 20 seconds left. Okay, set. And ignition. Alright. I'm calling it a second stage, but uh, we we're sort of in a two and a half stage configuration, so... Yeah, well, anyway, second stage is a go. We're going to have a fairly low orbit, though. Because we have just passed apoapsis. Okay, 15 seconds left, and we're still good. Getting ready to shut this one down. Okay, that's that's all right. And let's just go ahead with the sep of the second stage while we still have connection. We'll probably lose connection again like we did last time. So let's see, how much fuel do we have left? Not much. Just basically, I just basically shut down right in the last second. All right, double check. Yes, that's the right one. Ah, but it didn't do it. I'm not going to risk uh, pressing spacebar again. Let me just knock it off. All right. Let's get... Oh, no, no. Shoot. Turn that off now. All right. We are free. Okay, good. Now we've got 4,800 meters per second of delta V left. And that's plenty enough to get to the moon. So let's plot for it. Now, the trick is, we might not have connection on the transfer, t uh, at the transfer point. We'll see. Now, it wants us going retrograde. Got to remember that. So basically, we're going to have a free return trajectory at the start, probably. So that should be a retrograde orbit if we do that. 
Yes, I believe that is the right way to go. Not, uh, not a free return after all, but that is because we were aiming for this particular periapsis. All right, well, we've lost connection as expected, but let's see if we can regain connection by the time we reach a node. Um, we might have to wait for another pass, we'll see. Oh no, now we've got connection here. Two minutes and 30 seconds. That seems like it's long enough. Might be long enough for our initial burn at least. Okay. Gotta throttle up and... Here we go. We better have uh, connection all the way through this stage at least. I think we will. Oh, let's turn off... Oh, I guess we do need the RCS in order to maintain stability. Uh, let's turn off these tanks, though. Okay, as that does get expended, I'm gonna unlock these now. And uh, separate. And there we go. Let me finish unlocking them. Ah, but it's deviating. Okay, well, we'll need RCS. You know what, we're pretty far from our maneuver nodes, so maybe I will do a go around anyway. Okay, communications is getting a bit stretched. You can see our link to Pusan 3. Might be that we have to go around another time. We're not exactly reserving the kind of fuel margins I was hoping we would, but Still, should be plenty enough to fulfill this contract. We might be able to retain connection until the end of this burn. I'd rather not have to go around 13 hours. Okay, uh, looking good now. Now we've uh, acquired South Africa on the last bit of our burn, so we should be alright. That's the coast of South Africa right there. Okay, that'll do. I believe that'll bring us in retrograde. So that's fine. 1,273 left. Estimate about 800 to 900 for orbit. Maybe less than that since we're in such a high orbit. Uh, probably less than that. It really only takes 800 to bring us down really tight. So that's good. Now we have to be in an orientation where, okay, let's turn off RCS, but actually I just want to be north-south. That should be fine. Let's turn off SAS. We've got to give a single burn like that. Okay, that'll do. Okay, let's get over there. Ooh, Moon Periapsis is now 840 after turning. Okay. Okay, so now let's focus on the Moon. And we can see the intended orbit. We have an inclination problem, but at least we're going the right way around. <laughs> you know, mi minor, minor things like that. Very helpful. Let's see what we can do here. Well, I guess the best thing to do is we'll have line of sight on our periapsis. Let's do, and we're pretty close, pretty close there. But it wants our ascending and descending node in a particular place. It's not marking that out for us. Just going to do all of them in one burn. or most of it in one burn. One way or another we'll be able to do mystery goo around the moon. And we'll fulfill that contract. We have a contract for transmit or recover scientific data from space around the moon. So we can do that. Okay, well this is interesting. We have connection with Chandra 2. We've lost connection, direct connection to Earth. But Chandra 2's 
Well, it's time to choose an interesting place. We'll see. Okay, time to prepare for a burn. I'm gonna say that we look like we have connection, so we're gonna begin. SAS off, RCS. Oh, we've got delay. Good. Well, that's in. That's what we're supposed to have. I think we have direct connection to Earth. Should do. Yeah, we do, and we also have backup connection through Chandra 2. Best possible situation. Oh well, I guess uh, Megjev must have that readout somewhere, right? I should add that to orbit info. So uh, vessel orbit. Orbit. No. Uh, wait, wait. Have I missed it? Orbit shape with inclination. Argument of periapsis is there. Oh, longitude of ascending node. Right. Okay. That'll work. Looks like we're heading in the right direction on all numbers. And our apoapsis and periapsis is going down. So we're going to have to do something else to adjust this now. We have not reached the target orbit. On the bright side, our longitude of ascending node is pretty good. Inclination, not quite right. And we are in a lower orbit than we need to be in. And it reads that we have a mystery goo unit. That's good. I wanted to make sure of that. Now that it has that, I'm, I'm going to do the observe mystery goo, since that will fulfill the other contract. Okay, and I'm going to transmit this data. Okay, so that contract is fulfilled. Yes. And all I want to do is boost my apoapsis to the target apoapsis. Okay, now we can see ascending descending node. Okay, so it's only when I when I'm in orbit that it'll show up. Don't really see the effect of that right now. Let me do one thing at a time. Could be that we're close enough on some numbers for their tolerance. All right, so node in two hours. Oh, we've reached a designated orbit. Now let's turn everything off. Maintain stability, it says, though. That's not the same as neutral controls. Let's have both SAS and RCS on. Okay, good. Alright, so a little bit worried about the longitude of uh, sending node thing, but I guess uh, that was because I forgot that we could possibly uh, use MacJeb to tell us that. And it looks like it's got high tolerance. I mean, we're only we we're six degrees away from it. I can't even see our probe. Is there any way? Uh, let's, let's get into daylight so that we can see our probe which has successfully fulfilled this contract. There we go. And the moon? Oh, it's just uh, morning. Here, let's get a good good view of things. Okay. So, we have successfully put a satellite in a specific orbit around the moon. It wasn't the worst possible orbit and they gave us nice tolerance for it. But we fulfilled that contract, we fulfilled the science data contract. I think uh, we can be proud of ourselves. We got lots and lots of funds out of that, lots and lots of science. So yes, I think we have uh, achieved wonderful things in this episode and we will turn to even more ambitious things in the next one. Um, I, I've got an extra mystery goo experiment here, don't I? Should have done one close to... Well, we didn't really get close to the moon. Well, we'll think about that some other time. All right. So with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.